Attention all Starship fans, mark your calendars, get ready for Starship's Flight 6 and another booster catch because SpaceX has now announced that they are targeting Monday, November 18th for the sixth flight of Starship. As many of you remember and probably have rewatched this video over and over like I have, some of you were fortunate enough to be there in person, but October 13th was the last launch. So this would mean that SpaceX would launch in just a little over a month, which is great because we want them to ramp up their cadence and it looks like they're doing just that. In fact, SpaceX seems so sure of themselves and it honestly caught me by surprise. I was in Paris and I thought for sure because the FAA said that SpaceX wouldn't get their launch license until late November, that we wouldn't have a launch yet, but they got their launch license and sure enough, less than 24 hours later, we saw that amazing booster catch in the Mechazilla arms. So SpaceX is ready to go and they're not messing around. I think it's safe to say if they're announcing this now, then it's very likely that it'll be on Monday, November 18th which is so dang exciting. I have been waiting to hear when the next flight will be because I am still so bummed that I missed that booster catch in person. But hey, this next one, I will be there and I will provide you coverage. Now the rumors have been spreading that Starship Flight 6 could occur as soon as November 18th because of no TAMs posted. This is a notice to airmen. However, we now have confirmation from SpaceX, which is why I felt compelled to get this video out as soon as possible. SpaceX posted on X, Starship's fifth flight test was a seminal moment in iterating towards a fully and rapidly reusable launch system. Next up, the sixth flight test of Starship is targeted to launch as early as Monday, November 18th, and they also shared this amazing highlight reel from Flight 5, which you are watching right now. So what do we know about this next flight? Well, according to a press release from SpaceX, a live webcast of the flight test will begin about 30 minutes before liftoff, which you can watch on X and on SpaceX's website. The 30 minute launch window will open at 4 p.m. Central Time, which is interesting because I'm used to getting up so freaking early for these launches and this one is later in the day. SpaceX writes that their fifth flight test was a seminal moment in iterating towards a fully and rapidly reusable launch system. On the first attempt, the super heavy booster successfully returned to the launch site and was caught by the chopstick arms of the launch and catch tower at Starbase. Starship's upper stage went on to demonstrate several improvements resulting in a controlled entry and high accuracy splashdown at the targeted area in the Indian Ocean. The next Starship flight test aims to expand the envelope on ship and booster capabilities and get closer to bringing reuse of the entire system online. Objectives include the booster once again returning to the launch site for catch, reigniting a ship Raptor engine while in space, and testing a suite of heat shield experiments and maneuvering changes for ship reentry and descent over the Indian Ocean. This flight will also have hardware upgrades for additional redundancy to the booster propulsion systems. It will increase structural strength at key areas and shorten the timeline to offload propellants from the booster following a successful catch. Mission designers also updated software controls and commit criteria for the booster's launch and return. Just like in Flight 5, distinct vehicle and pad criteria must be met prior to a return and catch of the super heavy booster, which will require healthy systems on the booster and tower and a final manual command from the mission's flight director. If this command is not sent prior to the completion of the boost back burn, or if automated health checks show unacceptable conditions with Super Heavy or the tower, the booster will default to a trajectory that takes it to a landing burn and soft splashdown in the Gulf of Mexico. We accept no compromises when it comes to ensuring the safety of the public and our team, and the return will only take place if conditions are right. The returning booster will slow down from supersonic speeds, resulting in audible sonic booms in the area around the landing zone. Generally, the only impact to those in the surrounding area of a sonic boom is a brief thunder-like noise with variables like weather and distance from the return site determining the magnitude experienced by observers. Starship's upper stage will fly the same suborbital trajectory as the previous flight test, with splashdown targeted in the Indian Ocean. An additional objective for this flight will be attempting an in-space burn using a single Raptor engine 
further demonstrating the capabilities required to conduct a ship deorbit burn prior to orbital missions. Several thermal protection experience and operational changes will test the limits of Starship's capabilities and generate flight data to inform plans for ship catch and reuse. This flight test will assess new secondary thermal protection materials and will have entire sections of heat shield tiles removed on either side of the ship and locations being studied for catch enabling hardware on future vehicles. The ship will also intentionally fly at a higher angle of attack in the final phase of descent, purposefully stressing the limits of flap control to gain data on future landing profiles. And finally, and this is a question that I had that just got answered, adjusting the flight's launch window to the late afternoon at Starbase will enable the ship to re-enter over the Indian Ocean in daylight, providing better conditions for visual observations. So there we have it. And that means I won't be running on caffeine and adrenaline. (laughs) Well, I'll still have probably both of those, but I won't be uh, as miserable getting up at 5 a.m. Now, SpaceX goes on. Future ships, starting with the vehicle plan for the seventh flight test, will fly with significant upgrades, including redesigned forward flaps, larger propellant tanks, and the latest generation tiles and secondary thermal protection layers as we continue to iterate towards a fully reusable heat shield. Field. Learnings from this and subsequent flight tests will continue to make the entire Starship system more reliable as we close in on full and rapid reusability. So, with all of that being said, I'm very excited to be at Flight 6, and there is still time to order your new design of the Mechazilla shirt that I've sold in the past. On this design, you see the flame and I just think it's a better design and I hope that you guys like it. So if you want to support my channel, you can order these shirts for a limited time and celebrate what SpaceX is doing. Now, side note, of course, I am recording this video today, the day after the presidential election, and we know that President Trump will be back in the White House. Now, I try to remain very apolitical. As a journalist, I have learned not to share my political opinion, and I will continue to do that. However, I did want to read this post from Eric Berger because I think it is relevant. He writes, it is too early to fully assess space policy impacts of a Trump win. NASA was prominent in the first administration, and with Musk involved, it will be even bigger this time. Expect changes to Artemis and a renewed emphasis on Mars. So I think going forward, it will be really interesting to see how a Trump administration, especially from so much support from Elon Musk, will impact SpaceX and their ambitions. That's all I'll say about that, but it will be interesting to see if we have changes to Artemis and you guys in the comments can discuss your opinions on this. Some people are even asking if Jim Bridenstine will become administrator of NASA again. Jim recently stepped down from the Mars Sample Return Program, and so many people are asking what's next for him and NASA. Of course, Trump will also have to make the offer. But Eric, who is very in the know with the space industry, says he would bet against Jim coming back to NASA. So what do you guys think will happen? Do you think that SLS will get canceled? Do you think that perhaps SpaceX will be solely taking us back to the moon? There are a lot of questions, but now the election is over. And I think for many of us, that brings us peace knowing who is going to be the next president of the United States. As always, I want to focus on space and what's going on in the space world. And if there's one thing that can unite us, it's this beautiful moment of the booster being caught by the Mechazilla. So I'm going to focus on what's going on with space, and I hope that you'll join me and continue to watch my coverage. Save the date, tune in, because we're going to see that giant booster be caught again. Thanks so much for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.